Welcome, gentle listener. I am Baldemort, your faithful servant, and I wish to introduce you to the forces, factions, and important units of the Warhammer 40k universe, the grim darkness of the far future, where there is no time for peace, there is only time for war. And today, we are to look in very brief at the apothecaries of the glorious Ninth Legion, who are now the chapter known as the Blood Angels, the Sons of Sanguinius, most beloved and powerful of all of the Sons of the Emperor. Ever were the Blood Angels some of the most favoured of all of the legions, but by the same token, and perhaps due to many of their blessings, they were ever also the most cursed. For there are imperfections in the gene seed of the space marines of this lineage. One is called the Red Thirst, an almost vampiric need to consume red and hot blood. The other is the Black Rage, where the Blood Angel Astartes, space marine, suffers hallucinations and believes that they are either at the siege of the Imperial Palace on Terra, or actually their sire, the Angel, fighting his last duel against the arch-traitor Horus Lupercal on the bridge of the Vengeful Spirit. But in either eventuality, they are dislocated in time by some 11,000 years or more, and experience a rage that could only be comparable to the berserk fury of the World Eaters and their butcher's nails and chaos-twisted minds. And so, as usual, for the very basics, let us lean on existing wisdom. To quote, The Sanguinary Priesthood the secrets of Sanguinus's blood are central to the martial traditions of his sons and are guarded zealously by the Sanguinary Priesthood, the apothecaries of the Blood Angels. To these crimson-cloaked figures falls the duty of protecting the chapter's precious gene seed, as well as ensuring their wounded brothers can carry on fighting against the Imperium's enemies. Sanguinary Priests Every Space Marine chapter maintains a number of apothecaries to safeguard its gene seed and the health of its battle brothers. Yet Sanguinius foresaw that from the first that a shadow would fall upon his sons, and that they would require safeguarding in both body and soul as the millennia passed. He transformed the legion's apothecaries into sanguinary priests, setting them as high in honour as the chaplains of the Reclusium, and as vital to the spiritual guidance of the blood angels. Where the chaplains are ever watchful for the manifestation of the floor, the ceremonies performed by the sanguinary priests call upon the blood angels to embrace the red thirst and to wrest it to their control, unleashing its strength to buttress theirs when the day is darkest. As with the apothecaries of other chapters, the foremost concern of the sanguinary priests is to conserve the chapter's gene seed. If a wounded blood angel can be saved, the sanguinary priest will do his utmost to preserve his battle brother's life. As the injured blood angel is returned to full fighting health, so will the gene seed within him survive and the chapter endure. Sanguinary Novitiates Before they can take up the robes and chalice of the priesthood, a blood angel must first serve as a sanguinary novitiate. Trained in the arts of surgery, they are equipped with an arthecium and reductor common to all apothecaries and attend to the wounded under even the heaviest enemy fire. Should a patient prove beyond saving, they provide the Emperor's mercy and extract their fallen comrade's gene seed. Once a novitiate proves himself, he is then properly inducted into the priesthood's hallowed ranks, where he is made privy to the Order's secrets. Blood Chalices The first blood chalices were presented to the priesthood by Sanguinius himself. Legend has it that some part of the Primarch's being was contained within these holy vessels, allowing nearby blood angels to hear Sanguinius's voice within their minds. Though many of these ancient relics have been lost over the millennia, their shards are still incorporated within newly crafted vessels and within the Narthecums of the Sanguinary Priests. Their effects upon blood angels' battle brothers is still electrifying, the might of their angel-winged Primarch echoing through the ages to fill them with glorious strength. Brother Corbulo Keeper of the Red Grail Corbulo is the sanguinary high priest of the Blood Angels, wielder of the relic chainsword known as Heaven's Teeth and bearer of the Red Grail. It is said that no other Blood Angel resembles Sanguinius as closely as Corbulo, 
whose piercing eyes and noble aspect reflects the nature of the blood angels at its purest. It is this perfection that has driven Corbulo to such lengths in search of a cure for the red thirst. In the centuries since his investiture, Corbulo has worked ceaselessly to isolate and neutralize the flaw in the blood angel's gene seed. This quest has taken him all over the galaxy, visiting the fortress monasteries of other space marine chapters in order to learn from their apothecaries, and journeying to forgotten worlds in search of forbidden archaeotech from the dark age of technology. Kobulo's deep wisdom and canny insights are legendary, and his counsel has proven invaluable time and again. The Sangori High Priest shares Sanguinius's gift of the far-seeing eye, and can discern the patterns and shapes of a future yet to come, a blessing that has manifested only sparingly through the many generations of blood angels. Though scant hours not claimed by duty or in search of the red thirst cure, Corbulo spends poring over the scrolls of Sanguinius, seeking to combine knowledge from the Primarch's vision with the fleeting insights distilled from his own. Corbulo's travails in this regard have borne fruit many times. That the Blood Angels arrived so swiftly on Armageddon following Gazgul's initial invasion and at chapter strength was due in part to Corbulo's divinations. Similarly, without Corbulo's guidance, the Blood Angels' chapter fleet would never have known the hour and location at which Makar the Reborn's World Breaker Demon Cruiser would enter the Baal system, and could thus never have ambushed and obliterated the vessel before Baal itself was laid waste. It was Corbulo also who foresaw High Fleet Leviathan's attack on Baal. It was he who, seeing no other choice, authorized the pillaging of aspirants from the Baalite tribes and abandonment of their peoples to their fate. He fought the invading Xenos with remarkable fury, wading knee-deep through their corpses with his chainsword howling in gory arcs, and many believe that in his reckless butchery the sanguinary high priest sought to make amends for the innocent lives he so callously sacrificed for victory. The Red Grail The sanguinary high priest, Kobolo is charged with the wardenship of the Red Grail, the very chalice in which the blood of Sanguinius was preserved after the Primarch's death. This vessel is a key part of the induction mysteries of the sanguinary priests, but is also a potent relic upon the field of battle. Blood angels in the presence of the Red Grail find themselves reinvigorated, the physical and psychological aspect inherited from their Primarch enhanced in some unknowable way. Impossible though it may seem, perhaps some residual trace of Sanguinius's spirit lingers within the Grail, allowing him even in death to exhort his scions to ever greater deeds. End quote. Now, Kubulo is for me another sign of the end times being played out, and a potential narrative that could be used by Games Workshop and their writing wing, the Black Library. But I shall explain this in the future, in one of the ongoing narratives. But the Blood Angels are desperately in need of some form of new hope. Yes, the Primaris Marines were claimed to be clear of all deficiencies and errors, and yet the Black Rage and the Red Thirst are extant even in these new warriors now. It would seem that Call also agreed that the errors that were inherent in the Blood Angels Marines were in fact written into them on purpose. Either that, or could it be that the great Belisarius Call is not as infallible as he projects? Or is he simply a liar? Only time will tell. But for the Blood Angels the day of resurrection, the day that Gilliman led the Indomitus Crusade to Baal, and gave Dante the means, the manpower, the prime Maris marines, to reinvigorate his entire legion, his chapter, and every successor. That day was a lie. For they were told that they were newer, larger, tougher, better equipped brothers, but they were also clear of any imperfection. So it was hoped that the rage or thirst would have ended forever, if not both. And that clearly has not happened. It also has yet to be seen what Dante Corburo and all of the other Blood Angels will do if they ever get their power-armoured mitts on call. Should be fun. I have been Baldemort, your faithful servant, 
I hope you've enjoyed this brief introduction to the Sanguinary Priesthood and Brother Corbulo. If so, then please do consider liking and subscribing. If you do, then hit the notifications button, as I would not want you to miss out. If you see the worth in what we are doing, then do also consider joining our Patreon, or giving the video a share if that is beyond your scope. It would be a great boon. Now, no matter what you do today, do try to make some time for fun. Toodaloo!